Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the rkosuperbackgmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now, today's question of doom um, actually touches on a, a question or a topic or topics, which uh, I could have sworn I've already answered a question on, but I scrolled through the now 73, this is the 74th Question of Doom videos, and uh, no, it looked like I hadn't actually touched on this, to my surprise. So uh, it's both a pleasure and a, uh, with a little bit of, of um, amazement that I come to uh, to answer this question. So first of all, uh, so, well, here, this is how it goes. First of all, it goes like this. Um, hello, Mr. Soup. I don't know if you're still answering questions of doomses, but I figured I'd send you a quickie, uh, which has been lingering with me these past few months. What exactly is the difference between archaeology and anthropology? As far as I can tell, there is none. Anthropologists in the States, for example, dig up the remains of our ancestors in much the same way as archaeologists do in some other parts of the world, including the UK. Yet you, Others, even Indiana Jones and Lara Croft, are called archaeologists, not anthropologists. Please clarify the situation for me. Thank you very much, Maximilian O'Keefe. Well, Maximilian, uh, do you mind if I call you Max? I I'm afraid um, yeah, I'll just be tripping over Maximilian throughout this video otherwise. I'll just call you Max. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, you're quite right, this is, this is a topic which many people get a little bit confused about, not least because there's no one answer to it. <laughs> uh, there's certainly, um, I, I would say, um, academic cultures which have their own particular answer to this question. That is to say, for example, the Euro European culture and the US culture have fairly different answers. But, uh, but I think also it's worthwhile exploring the substance of your question as well. So, first of all, uh, the difference between the two. Um, depends on where you are. Um, but a good way of starting to examine this is to look at di dictionary definitions. So, anthropology, the scientific study of the origin, the behaviour and the physical, social and cultural development of human beings. Archaeology, the scientific study of humanity's past via artefacts, ruins, environments uh, and other uh, um, eco-facts which they have left behind. So, immediately, from those two definitions, you kind of get the answer. The answer is, archaeology has uh, um, a uniquely historical perspective. It looks at the origins and development of humanity in the past, right up until recent times, but doesn't really deal, excuse me, with, um, with modern culture. It doesn't really deal with how people are living today. It looks at the past. Archaeology, the study of ancient things, essentially. Anthropology, however, does, in its definition here, touch on the origin of human beings, as well as their behaviour uh, and culture and environment today. So, in that sense, archaeology can be thought of as being under the umbrella of uh, anthropology. Now, there are many people out there, many archaeologists, I know a few myself, who get very, very annoyed when people say this. And this is possibly because in their mind, uh, archaeology and anthropology um, do each other a disservice when they are slammed together and forced to cohabit, as it were. That said, though, quite literally, um, back in my old uni, um, uh, in the past couple of years, the archaeology and anthropology departments have actually literally merged. They've been sort of put into the same building, um, and an awful lot of good work can come out of uh, uh, this merged um, um, uh, approach to the past. Uh, perspectives can be revealed, new questions can be asked, but we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, I do prefer to see the two uh, disciplines as separate. Um, I do tend to think, actually, that you do do them a slight disservice if you, if you consider them to be anything other than uh, separate pursuits, because archaeology is dealing with a, a spectrum, a myriad, a whole... Um, a whole uh, Un, uh, untapped gamut of uh, of humanity in the past, which is 
continuing to be um, discovered, interpreted, re, uh, uh, reinterpreted, and thus it's not re it's not as though it's just a little section of something. It's actually humanity in its entirety up until recent times. Similarly, uh, uh, anthropology deals with humanity in the same kind of scope and spectrum um, today, and also does consider, for example, human evolution and the past to a certain extent. But I think it's, it's a good idea to keep them separate personally. I do think that they, they sort of take something from each other if you consider them just to be one thing. Um, now, they, they do have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, first of all, it's worthwhile considering the, the great struggles, I suppose, in archaeology and anthropology in terms of, I suppose, theoretical approaches. Uh, with anthropology, one of the greatest struggles has been actually the, the the fight against ethnocentrism that is the tendency the very natural tendency of human beings to assume that their way of living is normal um, and that sort of sense of normality um, can lead you to if you're looking at another culture and if they live it in a different way maybe they have a diff different marriage structure or if, they, or if they have a different way of, of dressing or not dressing um, or speaking or not speaking so on and so forth this can lead you to to judge that culture uh, to be better or worse than your own. You can sort of compare it to your your normality. That's better. That's worse. This is more more morally um, um, appropriate. This is oh, this is degraded and savage. So you end up. It, it, that's been one of the great struggles, really, of, of anthropology over the past hundred years. I suppose has been how one gets beyond. Um, this 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 ethnocentrism, this tendency to think of yourself as being or your culture as being sort of the the base plate from which um, you can you can view and judge the world. Um, and to their credit, anthropologists have do, been doing an awful lot to tackle some of those those questions and concepts. Uh, in archaeology, one of the great challenges, the greatest challenge, is really interpretation. How on earth, how on earth, does one go about um, uh, interpreting the, the, the objects, the artifacts, the ecofacts, the environments, the worlds which we uncover, um, without, again, I suppose to a certain extent, having a, a temporal bias, you know, sort of... Uh, thrusting our own views back onto the past and saying, well, this is how, you know, maybe, I don't know, if you had a, 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 a capitalist view of the world, or, or perhaps uh, even, for example, Marxism. Um, viewing the past through lenses of the present can be very, uh, a very um, questionable thing to do, especially the ancient past. So the question of how we interpret the past has always been a biggie, and, and it's one which I'm happy to say is, is an ongoing question, and ongoing answers are being formulated all the time. So these these are the these are the sort of the mutual weaknesses, but I would say actually also mutually they can help each other to tackle these questions, archaeology and anthropology. That is, um, this reminds me of a conversation I had with a, a, a lecturer, um, actually Peter Rowley Conway, the guy who I interviewed last week, but sadly the sound didn't keep. Um, where I think I'd just written written an essay, and we we're talking about the difference between archaeology and anthropology, and. Um, I was saying actually, well, one of the problems with anthropology is that the the, the viewpoint, the perspective of the of say an anthropologist in the field doing an interview, asking questions of people um, living in their in their in their native environment, um, can't necessarily be passed on the the, the, the specific agenda, the, the emotional connections, the the way in which questions are asked can't be replicated over time, and therefore you have to ask yourself how reliable. Um, first of all. Uh, question asking is from generation to generation in terms of a comparative study, but also as well, um, to what extent the person who is being asked these questions, i.e. if you go up to someone and go, you, you represent your culture, come here, answer these questions. Um, how much does anyone represent their entire culture? I'm, not, I'm sure I don't represent the entirety of, of the UK. Um, so in that sense, this data sampling uh, is a question which need, which possibly needs to be tackled and I think we both came to the conclusion that one of the best things to do would actually be, would be to freeze, cryogenically freeze anthropologists so that they could just pop out every 10 years and <laughs> ask the same questions in the same way, perhaps video them, them doing it so that you have this so that you can see as you're as you're monitoring um, what they're asking and what the answers are, you can see sort of visual cues, body language, this kind of thing, and then freeze them again, and then 10 years later, pop them out again, and they can continue their research and have a, a, a sort of a long-term perspective on, on, on modern-day cultures. Um, probably not all that feasible, though, but we figured that that would be a good, a good answer uh, to that particular problem. Um, uh, also as well, actually, it's, it's worthwhile thinking about the origins of anthropology and archaeology. In many ways, archaeology has its origins in artefact 
collecting, um, so curio collecting, I suppose, um, an artifactual study of the past. The 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 um, the, uh, the the idea, right or wrong, that we can understand people in the past through the things that they have left behind. Um, anthropology arguably has its roots in anecdotes, in people travelling the world and coming back and saying, oh, well, like over there, they live like this, and they do that in this way, and they eat, um, I don't know, they eat guinea pigs. Um, so uh, the, the origins are also separate. Uh, again, it's, it's just all these little ideas, but this is also worthwhile considering. The difference between the two, uh, I suppose, architectural and anecdotal, is quite a big difference in terms of their starting points. But one of the great early works of anthropology actually was The Golden Bough, uh, written by uh, Sir James George Fraser, I always forget his name. Uh, but it was a treatise on sort of mythology, religion, kingship. Um, it's quite a thick book, I think I've got, got a copy here. There you go. Um, it's quite a big, thick book, but it's, um, it's also actually, by today's standards, not very well written, it's rather disorganized. But uh, it's it's a great book because it it's, it highlights fairly early on the the, the desire of, of anthropologists to understand humanity and the different ways that human beings live. But also, I think it also highlights some of these problems that we've touched on, and that is things like ethnocentrism, comparing cultures which probably shouldn't be compared, and so on and so forth. Now. Um, by tackling these weaknesses, both archaeology and anthropology actually can draw on each other's strengths, certainly in my opinion. Um, so, for example, archaeology is a wonderful way of studying the variation and the, uh, um, the, the, the various forms that, that society and human beings can take, especially in various environments, environments which no longer exist today, for example, uh, the Mammoth Steppe, this kind of thing. And seeing um, the, the possibilities for human culture, and this actually, may, uh, I think, offers interesting questions and contexts for anthropology to go forward and ask questions about, well, I wonder why in this situation this culture has done this rather than that, as they did, for example, a thousand years ago or ten thousand years ago or so. But also, vice versa, anthropology, I think, has a great um, potential and also use for in archaeology in providing what's often termed, I suppose, middle-range theory, that is, uh, modern-day observations and answers to questions which um, leave only trace uh, evidence in the past. So, for example, why on earth are these tools gathered here like this? What is the, what is the purpose of this? And rather than going, oh, it's ritual, you can actually ask a question perhaps about anthropology just to, to see if there are any um, comparative examples perhaps uh, amongst, um, uh, amongst the Inuit. Uh, in terms of behaviour, which may well lead you to understand, for example, why someone in a freezing cold environment 18,000 years ago would have done or behaved in a certain way. So actually both both disciplines can also draw on each other, but, it, oh, but they can draw on each other, I would argue, Max, because they are in fact distinct. So um, I know this has been a slightly rambling answer to your question, but I think I've touched on the main uh, contrasts and comparisons which I think are important between archaeology and anthropology. They both uh, complement each other's work. They are both studying humanity but I would say that they are best kept apart um, because by being slightly separate and also having lots of dialogue, lots of interactions, uh, they both grow I would say. Uh, and if you have only um, uh, um, an idea if not practice, that our archaeology as part of anthropology is just a, a slice of the pie, then I think you do archaeology a disservice, but also as well, I think you possibly distract anthropologists. Now obviously this is very much a British perspective. I live in the UK and of course I'm going to say that. And many uh, anthropologists, sorry, in the US for example, will not see this problem at all. That said, though, um, it's not always a problem, and uh, I'm quite happy to concede that there are many anthropologists who have absolutely no issue with with, uh, with keeping the idea of studying the past and the present separate and calling it anthropology. But what I would say is, for the for the for the for the ease of labelling, um, uh, I think it's a good idea to keep the studies uh, labelled separately, but also keep a good dialogue between the two. Now, um, I suppose to answer your question. Why uh, why are people like Indiana Jones and <laughs> Lara Croft and so on and so forth um, called archaeologists and not anthropologists? Why is it uh, um, 
uh, ways Indiana Jones introduced as an archaeologist and expert in the occult, this kind of thing. Well, I would say, actually, Max, it's just because archaeology is just cooler. I'm sorry to say it, but it's just true. Archaeology is cool. Anthropology is a bit of a hard sell. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I think it is just because archaeology is, is a more well-known um, word. That's basically what it boils down to. It, 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 people are more accustomed to the word archaeology, and possibly because the study of archaeology has its roots in the classics and the classical world, which is itself one of the oldest um, um, uh, academic pursuits in the world. So. In some ways, archaeology is more well known because it's just got a little bit more of a pedigree in that sense, uh, a linguistic pedigree that is. Uh, anthropology, anthropologists, um, I'm fairly sure are fairly cool people. I've met many anthropologists who are very cool and therefore um, maybe Indiana Jones should be known as an anthropologist. Maybe he, they should reclaim that word for him. <clears throat> anyway, I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm going to go and have a, a drink of water. Hopefully this, this um, answer has been interesting to you, if not has helped to, to answer your question, Max. And I'm amazed we haven't touched on this before, archaeology and anthropology. What are the differences? Why are they different? Can they work together? Should they be lumped together? Uh, hopefully this has helped to answer some of those ideas and questions for you. So, if you have any thoughts or questions or suggestions, please do comment below as always. I'm sure Max would love to hear them. Uh, and with that in mind, like I say, I'm going to go and get some water. Until next time, guys, bye bye.